Hello everybody and a very warm welcome back to Tony North Easton. And I hope you're all keeping safe and well. And here we are, another episode at the North Easton. And um, yeah, what you've just witnessed is the A5 climbing Stevenson's Bank with four suburban coaches. And it just about made it really and that's that was almost on full whack on, on the old speed. Um, uh, yeah, so it made it up the bank into the station, which is good. Um, yes, it's good to be back, and it's, I've been enjoying the comments once again. And um, hopefully now we can carry on with Jarrah Road. So, let's have a look to see where we were at Jarrah Road. So let's have a recap on Jarra Road Station. Um, in the last video, well, not the last video, but the video before the last, we had started putting in the glazing. And I did have a comment on that video regarding putting in a small canopy across these two canopies here. Now I do have one slight problem with that and that's the space I've got between the two lintels. The lintel uh, there and the windowsill has only about 4mm gap. So I'll have to check uh, the heights. The heights look about right. Look like I might be able to get something in there. But uh, we shall see. So maybe with a little bit of measuring we might just be able to put a flat roof in rather than one of these um, canopies but um, yeah we'll have a think about that one so in the meantime let's carry on glazing moving on a bit um, I have now framed the windows on the canopy using some 2mm plastic sheet uh, which covers up the joint between the glazing and the canopy and uh, yeah it, it's not too bad of a finish um, I don't think I'll paint it I'll probably just um, weather it down because um, <laughs> it would take a, a lot of effort to paint it in situ than it would do if it was on the bench so that's going to save me a little bit of a job. So that's where we are at the moment. We've completed one side and we're halfway along the um, left hand side as it were. If you're looking at the station um, from the opposite view. So that's where we were. We've only got a little bit to do there now. It's only about uh, what seven inches long. So that won't take as long to do that. So I've come up with a, a little bit of a compromise for a small canopy to go across the door as it happens. Um, I found this in my come and handy box. Uh, it was left over from um, the new Hassle kit, um, the Fallow Bond Station kit. And that would fit in there nicely. I've just got to make some support brackets up for it and trim it down of course and then that would uh, finish that off I had a bit of um, a plastic angle to go across the front and maybe a bit of plastic sheeting to hide all these drilled out holes but um, that would work a treat in there but uh, yeah so that's what I'm going to do with that so we've got a little bit of a, a compromise there to give the, uh, the passengers some um, cover from the weather. Not that it uh, rains much inside the loft, but uh, there you go. <laughs> so, cracking on. Here we are, we're back at the bench and um, we're going to start on the intermediate canopy. Um, I've already cut this down to size, um, which is 94 millimeters, but that 94 millimeters is in between the canopies um, 
so we've got roughly 94.5 there so there's a little bit of a play so basically it's just that ridge and that ridge will be using to glue onto the two existing canopies so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to lay some plastic strip across there and across there um, I'm going to place an angle on the front um, so it comes down a little bit so we'll have a little bit of a, an edge there but not too much because I don't want to completely hide uh, the two doors um, because it's just sitting above the doors but I still want to be able to fit four brackets to this so here is a makeshift drawing of roughly what it may look like so we've got a 94 millimeters what are going to come in 25 millimeters either side and here are the four brackets so what am I going to use for the brackets well I've had a, a little bit of a look with that one because I've got these left over from the footbridge kit so I'm going to do I'm going to glue these onto some plastic strip and then glue these to the underside of the um, glazing that we have here. So let's make a start. Right, I have glued the strips on, the two mil there and some two mil right angle here. So we'll leave that to dry uh, while we concentrate on the brackets. Now I've gone into my come and handy box and found some bits and pieces of plastic. Um, so what I'm going to do, I have cut out these old footbridge supports and I'm going to glue them to this little bit of plastic to create the brackets that's going to support the canopy. So I'll just glue these on there. So I'll do that and we'll shall see what they look like afterwards. So this is what I had in mind, something that uh, looks like a wrought iron bracket and that's just with making bits and pieces that were left over in my commandy draw. So that's the brackets done. So what I'm doing now is I am sticking four pieces of plastic strip to the windows here, um, one either end and two 25 million so well, that will just get glued onto there and that there will act as a support for the the brackets as long as there's I think in the way in the building so I'm gonna to have to check that before I go any further and here we are some time later the intermediate canopy is finished um, I have added the quarter round to the front so we've got a nice little profile along there and I've just this second glued the little brackets onto the the canopy itself as you can see so we'll let them dry and once they dry I'll paint them red and then um, this will be ready to glue between the two existing canopies Right, so I've offered up the canopy and it looks like it's going to miss everything. So I might as well start painting these brackets red. So I'll only paint the brackets. And then uh, we'll let the paint dry and then we can um, glue this in place. Um, there's only one thing left to do once this is done. Well, two things left to do. There's the lead flashing which I'm going to run along the whole length of the canopies on both sides. And of course the little tiny vent that's above the refreshments room. So that's the final two things. Uh, there may be a little bit of weathering. And obviously I've got to add some peoples for the final details. 
and uh, that's it, we can move on. It's taken a little bit longer than I thought this uh, Jara Road. I'm guessing it's down to all the internal detail that I had because that was nearly a month's worth of work there, but uh, I think it was worth it. And as for the vent, I'm going to use one of these. You find these in packaging. They're like little uh, press clips that hold your, your goods in um, place um, while travelling in, in the postal service and things like that. So I'm going to use one of these. So here's one I've done earlier. I've trimmed it down. I've flattened the top off and this just requires paint. I've also cut the base at a slight angle to match the pitch on the roof so once that's painted that'll look uh, like a vent once it's glued onto the roof but uh, we shall see whether it will or not uh, once it's done. So in the meantime I shall paint this up and here it is uh, all painted up now I use three colours for this. I use silver to get right into the crevices there and uh, black matte for the base and then white for the the top and the, and the surrounds and to me that looks like a vent but we shall see. We shall glue it onto the roof once the paint's dried and uh, we'll find out then. Right, so here we are, we're back at Jarrow Road Station and as you can see I have stuck in the intermediate um, canopy and I'll tell you what, it don't look too bad. It looks a little bit too much on the modern side but um, yeah, it, it don't look too bad. Now then, what I'm doing now is these white frames are too white, they're, they're kind of in your face white so what I'm doing now is I'm just using this Citadel colour um, to tone down the framework. So I'm just brushing it on straight away. It's taking the white edge off and leaving a very subtle green as it were. Really toning it down. And um, I'm leaving it on. I'm not going to rub it back off again because it will only smear it. So it's just very light strokes on all these cross members on the windows. Just to tone them down rather than um, giving them a full paint job. I've done the same with the intermediate canopy there and it really does take the edge off the white. And then what I'll do later on is I'll get some um, grey and do some streaks. put too much on like I have done in that corner. Q-tip just to take that back. Might even do a couple of, a couple of little bits off there. Probably won't see it when it dries but it's all about experimentation. So here we are at track level and you can see all the brackets and uh, all the details still but uh, if I lift the camera up you can't see any of that but that's the view with the intermediate canopy in. So yeah it looks as if it's, it's been there all the time and uh, it's blended in quite well.
So, now that we've finished with the canopy, then the next job I want to look at is the lead flashing. So what I've got here is I've painted some paper with some silver paint and I'm cutting them into 3mm strips um, for the lid flashing. So what I'm going to do is try and fold this if I can. Um, it's not going to be easy but it can be done. Start with this in. There we go. So once you get, get a crease going you can just rub your fingernail up the centre and then fold it over. like so and then what we'll do we'll stick that between the canopy roof and the brick wall and that'll just hide the the edge and uh, once it's painted in situ with a little bit of weathering it will um, look like lead flashing that's what we're going to do next some lead flashing so I need about uh, six of these strips so I'll carry on So here we are, we're back at the station and uh, we're just about to fit the leaded strips, well the paper strips that look like lead anyway. Um, as you can see I've uh, pre-folded it and then unfolded it and then folded it back up again so it just gives it a little bit of flexibility. Now I'm using a syringe with some PVA wood glue in there so what I'll do is I'll just run I'll just check the length that I want so it's roughly from there to the edge of that tree so it's roughly about there and I'll just run this wood glue all the way along in one hit Keep the bead of glue small if I can. And it's just a case of putting in the lead flashing. And it's as simple as that. I just go along with a Q tip. To wipe off any excess glue. And then I'll come along later on with some matte black just to tone it down a bit, take the shine off of it. Right, so that's the first piece done. Just got to continue all the way along and uh, bring it down on that face over there at the walls and uh, yeah it's another small piece done and to finish off the lead flashing I'm using some of the Citadel Null Oil this stuff and as you can see there is a slight contrast between what I've done already and the new and um, don't off change the look of it. And just take any excess that you've got running on the roof off or you could just let it run. But yeah. It looks shiny at the moment but once that's dry it dries uh, to a matte finish, just got to put a little bit in this corner. There you go. Got the streaks in it. So it's all about experimenting. Uh, you won't even see that when it's dry. Right, so here you go. That's what I've done there to, to finish off the the lid flashing. And it does look. So we're just going to pan the camera around, just have a little look. So 
So the last flashing was the last part um, of building this station. The station is now finished. Um, we'll come back to it at some point because I don't think there's enough people on the platforms. As you can see through there, there's just a few people sitting down having a chin wag, and that's about it. But yeah. And there's the little vent. And that's been slightly weathered too, using the same null oil. So it's been it's been a journey from the original concept drawings. A little bit of a change with adding the extra story, and I think adding the extra um, floor to the building has made it that much more grandeur I think and uh, you can still see all the detail inside with the station master's office there there's nobody in there, I can't remember if I put anybody in there, no I didn't but there's a couple of people in the booking hall with the secretary and uh, the guy there who's just about uh, waiting for his first customer. So yeah, it's been a little tiny part of the Tony Northeastern journey which is now finished. So what will it be next time? Well, I've got a couple of ideas. Maybe I could do the little cottage first or I could start on the signal box and signals for the uh, station approach so I could do that and here's a view as we approach into the station it's not as long as it seems believe you me the Platform 1 can just about hold three suburban coaches and a locomotive. So yeah, as you can see the, the lid flashing really does set it off and toning it down as well. Right, we couldn't finish the video without having a look at Jaro as it was in the 1950s. Um, well, that's when this photograph was taken. Obviously, uh, this station was built two years before South Shields was built. So, yeah. As you can see, you can plainly see that the, the front there is a canny resemblance of what I've just built. So yeah, I thought we'd have one last look at Jarrow Station. Right, so now it's competition time. A chance for one of you guys to win a set of Medcalf canopies. Now, they're no good to me because, well, I've built my own. And um, all you have to do is answer one question. <laughs> right, uh, here it goes. How many bridges have I got on this layout? That's road bridges and rail bridges um, I'm not interested in foot bridges they've got to be a, a rail bridge or a road bridge and um, yeah place your answers in the comments below um, it's a tricky question this one you've got to really know the layout uh, in order to get um, that question right so how many road and rail bridges are there on this layout and uh, you've got into next Friday to get your answers in so you've only got a few days and um, if there is a tie the names will go into a hat and will be the usual draw but there you go a nice set 
Metcalf platforms that look great on anybody's layout. So I think that's all from me this week, and um, we'll see you again next week. Bye for now.